What's up, guys? Carolina Jackpot coming at you. August 7th, 2021 from the redesigned Carolina Jackpot Jackin Studio. Got the South Carolina light behind me, picture above me. We need some curtains and something to give it a little avidance, but we put some new floors down in the house last week. And uh, what better time than this to come inside from the outdoor studio and uh, do some pick and prediction videos. I'm looking forward to this one because this is a team that I am really excited about. Why? Because I really don't know what to expect. And is that not how it comes out every year, guys? We really don't know what to expect from South Carolina football. It's just, it's always, you know, just like reaching down into a, a big old huge pillowcase at Halloween time and wondering what you're going to pull out. Nobody knows what we're going to get, but I do think we're going to get enthusiasm. I think we're going to get excitement. I think we're going to get dedication, and I think we're going to get a little bit of winning. Let's step into it right now. Before we really get into the pick and prediction video, I want you to make sure that you go down in the description box below and visit, at least visit, the homepage of the Rob and Kale Show, the podcast that I do with my friend from the Midlands, Rob Sanders. We uh, are the key components in the Callaway Sports Bar and Grill Pick'em Challenge, which happens every year. It's $20 to get in, guys, and you are in for the entire year. The more of you guys that get into this contest, the bigger the pot that we give away at the end of the year grows. If we get 50 of you guys in here, that's $1,000 that we're going to give away for a pot. If we get 100 of you, that's $2,000. Who knows? If we get 200 of you, it's $4,000. It all depends on your participation. The links to check it out are in the description box below. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail explaining it, but it is a really cool college football pick em contest against the spreads that we do every single week that we recap on the Rob and Kale Show. Now, if you're a South Carolina Gamecocks fan, make sure you pay attention to this video. Watch it. This will be one of the best ones that you see all year long because I am, uh, and not bragging on myself, the best South Carolina Gamecocks YouTuber on social media, bar none. Share this one uh, to your friends, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Instant Messenger, uh, Carrier Pigeon, Stork, however you choose to uh, snail mail, uh, to share things, do it that way. Um, and uh, I, I realize there are a lot of South Carolina Gamecock groups on Facebook. I'm in a lot of them, but uh, I'm also not part of a lot of them, and I would like to get everything out there for everyone to see. So we'll dive right now into 2020 and spend a little bit of time on that. A lot of you people don't want to spend a lot of time on that. But the Gamecocks were 2-8 and eight in 2020, uh, a COVID year. Uh, as the team uh, really didn't have a lot of issues with that. It was more a lot of the opponents did. Uh, but South Carolina started out 2-5, and five, and uh, after that, and a uh, horrible loss at Ole Miss in which they gave up, I think, about a million yards uh, <laughs> defensively, uh, they decided to part ways and oust head coach Will Muschamp. To be honest with you, should have been done at the end of the 2019 season. Uh, things happen for a reason. I, I don't know why. Buyout money, uh, et cetera. I didn't have a plan. I don't, I don't really know why it was. I mean, he bullshitted everybody. Uh, but he remained as head coach in 2020. I thought it was the wrong move. They did it anyway. In comes uh, new head coach Shane Beamer. And it seemed like to me uh, that South Carolina really didn't do a huge extensive coaching search. Uh, and, and this is the second time in a row that we've done that. Uh, when, you know, South Carolina kind of had a head up on the competition as far as uh, coaches quitting or, you know, firing head coach to, you know, go out and really, really uh, – beat the bushes and find a new head coach. Shane Beamer is a guy that uh, athletic director Ray Tanner, who doesn't have the best track record of hiring head coaches, fell in love with. And it seemed like he was the head guy from the beginning to end. And everybody said, Beamer's a guy, you might as well hang it up. And I was like, nah, well, I don't know. Maybe Billy Napier, maybe this guy, maybe this, that guy. Nope, and it ended up being Beamer. Um, and I was not happy about that head coaching hire and that decision at the beginning. And I'll go on ahead and freely admit that. He's never been a coordinator. 
on either side of the ball, and that really concerned me a lot. I've been an assistant coach for 20 years. That concerned me a lot, too. But after I got to listening to the guy and listened to him a lot, and I looked at uh, who he had coached up as players, who he had coached under as an assistant coach, I uh, became a believer in Shane Beamer. And right now, I am a huge believer in him, and um, I think that he's going to do great things at the University of South Carolina. He's saying all the right things. Uh, he's got the recruiting classes heading in the right direction. He's bringing some notoriety back to the program. Um, I'm a fan of Shane Beamer at this point in time, but I will not uh, tell you uh, a lie. And I was not a fan of his hire at the beginning of it. Let's go back into recruiting. 2018 South Carolina Fish, number 18 in the country. Um, there's a lot of key parts. In fact, nine of them still on this team in 20. 21 that were recruited in 2018. Two of those guys are uh, playing in the NFL right now as far as uh, Israel Mkwamu and J.C. Horn. 2019, you finished number 21. You had a five-star there and Zach Pickens, who we picked up. Not a lot left out of that class. The 2020 class, a five-star and Jordan Burke. You also picked up high four-star uh, Marshawn Lloyd, the running back, and uh, Luke Doty, your starting quarterback. And 2021, South Carolina finished up number 79 uh, in the country, last in the SEC. Um, and this this recruiting class, it's, you could say it was because Will Muschamp got fired, but this thing was doomed from the start. Uh, they were 40-something even when he was the head coach. Um, and then his firing led to some decommitments. Um, you did bring in some guys out of the transfer portal to kind of fill the class out, but really, really disappointing. Worst in the SEC last year, and honestly, one of the worst in SEC history. That may be a problem uh, depth-wise uh, going forward, but it is what it is, guys, and we're going to see what we've got going on there. Uh, key addition to this coaching staff, which is totally overturned except for uh, uh, defensive line coach uh, Mike Peterson, uh, your, your strength and conditioning coach, Luke Day. A guy who's coming over from Marshall. He's also had some stops at Cincinnati and Colorado. Um, new system there as far as strength and conditioning goes. And uh, I'm really uh, a believer in this young guy as a, a coach uh, of the strength and conditioning program. That is an area that South Carolina has had some real problems in uh, over the past five, six years is injuries. Injuries, injuries. It seemed like we were always the most injured team in the damn Southeastern Conference. We look at it and say, well, if he hadn't been hurt, well, if he hadn't been hurt, well, well he got hurt. Well, I don't know what we're going to... Well, if eight starters on defense hadn't been out, we'd have beat Clemson that year. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's the same old thing over and over. Hopefully, he can come up with some kind of regimen, hopefully he's got it implemented, where we will not have these nagging problems this year going forward. So I'm telling you, that's going to kill a team that doesn't have a lot of depth, which South Carolina fans, I know you're tired of hearing it, lack of depth, lack of depth, they ain't got a whole lot of depth until here. We don't, well, we don't. Uh, let's just go on ahead and tell you, right now we do not have a lot of depth, but it is coming. Eight starters come back on uh, offense. You got six starters coming back on defense. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to go into this little rant real quick, and then we're going to get into it. I don't want to hear the shut about from opposing fan bases. Well, you're not going to win at South Carolina. There's no way. Coach, you're going to go three and nine, blah, blah, blah. If you think that you can't win football games and build a good, solid winning program in the SEC at South Carolina, you're just, you're, you're football ignorant. You are, uh, you're football dumb, and you should just log off here and uh, go find yourself some coloring books and uh, you know, whatever else will float the fancy of someone who's really just not all that intelligent. South Carolina has uh, great facilities. They have a great fan base. They have a lot of money. They have uh, a base of alumni who is uh, very strong, and they're committed uh, to winning football games. It's going to happen. The Will Muschamp hire set the program back seven, eight years. I, I'm not going to lie to you. It really did. It was the wrong hire, and it was a bad hire. Um, but I'm not going to accept that you cannot win football games here. You can attract top-level talent here. It's going to take uh, a couple of winning seasons to do so. But these three and four stars that South Carolina is picking up right now are going to develop into high four and five stars 
uh, overnight when South Carolina starts winning, uh, and they will. We have a divided fan base right now. We have a fan base who's very argumentative, it seems like, and they want to fight amongst each other. And you'll have that when you aren't a very good program. When you're losing a lot of games, especially when you're losing a lot that you shouldn't be losing or that you feel you shouldn't be losing, you're going to have infighting and bickering. Hell, Clemson fans and Alabama fans who have been at the top of college football for at least five, six years are fighting among each other right now. Uh, so you're definitely going to have it on a team that's really not that good. Luke Doty, uh, quarterback uh, who returns for South Carolina, Income guys, a freshman this year, as you know, everyone who played last year gets an extra year of eligibility because of the coronavirus. 43 of 71 throwing the ball last year. He became the starter uh, for the last three games of the season uh, after the incumbent starter, Colin Hill, was benched. Um, two uh, touchdown passes on the year, three interceptions, threw for 405 yards. Um, I'm not going to lie to you, Luke looked really lost and uh, confused at times uh, in the offense, the passing game. He can run around a little bit. He ran around for 91 yards last year. He was sacked seven times, uh, so not a real good job of winning pressure there. He did do some good things, and we do need to see a ton of development in the passing game from this young man because, as we're going to get to in just a minute, the wide receiver group also is really inexperienced as well. Uh He's going to be backed up and or challenged for that starting position by a young man named Jason Brown, who most recently was the starting quarterback at St. Francis of Pennsylvania, which is an FCS school uh, in the Northeastern Conference. Jason Brown last played college football in 2019. He and E.J. Jenkins, a kid who transferred to South Carolina as a wide receiver, uh, came because St. Francis canceled football in 2020 and uh, they just got to hack out of town. They were some really, really good players. You can find some diamonds in the rough in the FCS. And Jason Brown has dropped about 25 pounds in the offseason. Has a really good arm, uh, really good chemistry with EJ Jenkins, a wide receiver who stands at six foot eight. We'll talk about that in just a second. He's pushing Luke Doty for that starting role. I would not be surprised to see kind of a two quarterback system. With South Carolina being Doty is the guy who kind of runs around a little bit, maybe not as out to throw it, and Jason Brown uh, as the guy who we bring in on third and long to uh, kind of air the ball out just a little bit. That's just an observation that I see there. We bring back Kevin Harris, uh, the uh, SEC's uh, leading rusher, uh, 1,138 yards last year and uh, 15 touchdowns. Kevin Harris, uh, a kid, extremely talented, uh, Several 200-yard rushing games last year. However, in Phil Steele's magazine, he puts him on the All-SEC second team. I don't know if that's because Kevin Harris got the bulk of his yards against just a few teams. I don't know if it's because of South Carolina's offensive line. I really don't know what the answer is to that, but I think he kind of got slapped a little bit in the face with that one. Um, the kid just has a motor that won't stop, but it does seem to me that when he faces really good defensive especially the front seven, and uh, he gets stopped early on in games, it's kind of hard for him to pick up a lot of yardage. When he goes against teams that he's able to get rolling against early, he just starts rolling and can't stop. Um, it, it, but you'll have a lot of uh, fans, especially ones from opposing fan bases, tell you, oh, well, he gained the bulk of his yards against Ole Miss and Vanderbilt, which are horrible defenses. Okay, that's true it, it, in Kentucky as well. But guess what? It was a 10-game SEC schedule last year. Everybody played Kentucky, Ole Miss, and Vanderbilt pretty much. So, you know, what's the excuse now? The guy's very talented. Uh, Marshawn Lloyd uh, is probably going to be backing him up. Marshawn Lloyd was the guy who should have been – the starter last year, and we would have thought would have been the starter. He had an ACL tear like the first day of fall practice last year, out for the season. How is he going to recover from that injury? Coach Beamer um, and uh, the running backs coach, Montario Hardesty, uh, say that he's looking full strength right now. So I'm excited to see what Marshawn Loy can do there athletic-wise and athlete-wise. I think he may be able to do some things that Kevin Harris can't 
pre-injury. I want to see what he can do post-injury. Uh, Zaquandre White, uh, third stringer, is another guy who's really motivated, got a motor that just won't stop. Um, he may get some touches in there as well as uh, Rashad Amos, uh, another young man who played a little bit last year sparingly. Uh, South Carolina will be fine at the running back position. Um, barring we don't have any injury there. I, we don't know what Marshawn Lloyd can do as a college football player. We've never seen him on a college field as far as competition goes. So that's a, it's still a question mark, but one would think that that position will be fine. The wide receiver position group is another one that there are a ton of questions here. South Carolina has a lot of, uh, a lot of talent here on this side of the ball. Uh, Marion Brown, a kid who's transferring in from Georgia Tech, uh, caught the ball for about 550 yards last year. Josh Van, a kid who's been with the program forever. Uh, Jalen Brooks, a kid transferred in from Wingate last year, uh, along with EJ Jenkins, which I talked about, a six foot eight wide receiver who transferred to South Carolina from St. Francis with Jason Brown. He will be a matchup nightmare uh, with SEC cornerbacks if if he has the speed. Xavier Leggett, a kid who caught some balls last year for South Carolina, uh, or Trey Smith and Randrikas Davis are some kids who'll be coming back to opt it out uh, of the 2020 season because of the COVID. And another kid that I am really, really looking forward to seeing this year is Dak Joyner, uh, number five, Cinco. Uh, started out playing quarterback at South Carolina in 2018 and 19, transfers over to the wide receiver position. Um, we got a new wide receiver coach coming in, and Justin Stepp comes over from Arkansas as a South Carolina native. I'm really um, excited to see what uh, Dak Joyner can do with some new leadership. I want to see him succeed at South Carolina. It seems like, by God, he's been around for a million years, but he's only a sophomore because of the extra year from COVID, because of a redshirt year. But you only played four games. He's been with the program since 2018. He played in quarterback uh, in 2018 against UT Chattanooga, scored a touchdown or so. He, he is a good kid. He stuck with this program. He's done whatever they asked him to do. It's his time to shine now, and hopefully this year he can really, really get it going. It's an unproven group, but it's an athletic group. And to me, if you have a quarterback that can get them the ball, Luke Doty, They'll be okay. They will be okay. These are normally your most athletic players uh, on the field. And I just think that, uh, you know, there is a lot of trepidation going into 2021 about this wide receiver room. They'll be okay, guys. They will be okay. I think that trepidation and I think that, uh, you know, I think that nervousness is just a little bit overrated. I think it's a little bit overrated, uh, overrated, not overrated. And not to downplay the fact that they don't have a ton of experience. The ball's got to be spread out a little bit. We've got to give these guys opportunities to make catches. South Carolina's downfall in the past five, six years has been that they don't spread the ball out. Do you remember back in 2011, 2012, 2013, when South Carolina was winning 11 games a season? You had a bevy of young men that you could throw the ball to that could make plays. The past few years, it seemed like, okay, well, this year, D Debo Samuel was the guy. And nobody else really got any touches. Next year, it seemed like Brian Edwards was a guy. Nobody really got any touches. Next year, in 2020, Shy Smith was a guy. Nobody else really got any touches. There were not, uh, the, the, the ball was not spread around a lot. And, and hey, maybe, I'm not a football coach. Maybe that's because of practice. Maybe they just didn't have the confidence to uh, try to hit these kids. But I think that given uh, the opportunity to catch the ball, I think they're going to make some plays. I think they're going to surprise some people, and I think they'll be okay. At the tight end position, Nick Muse is a solid player. Uh, 425 yards receiving last year and one touchdown. Um, how they'll use Jakeem Bell, uh, a young man who uh, is kind of a utility guy, kind of a Swiss Army knife type player. He's lined up at fullback. He's lined up at running back, wide receiver. He's lined up at uh, everything but quarterback on offense. It seems like I want to see how uh, he reacts and as Nick Muse is back up this year, EJ Jenkins is another kid who may see some playing time at tight end as well. South Carolina may go to a two tight end set. We really don't know. 
Along the offensive line, you got four starters returning there. Um, this is a unit that gave up 27 sacks last year, which is one of the highest ones in the Southeastern Conference. Um, and that also could be due to a little bit of poor run blocking. Um, but Phil Steele ranks them as his number four returning offensive line in the SEC. And you'll see me refer to Phil Steele in these videos a lot. I really do... Uh, value the guy's opinion. If you look at his magazine, you read it, you, you look at the track record of, you know, what happens at the end of the year. He, I wouldn't say he's spot on because nobody's spot on. Nobody's spot on, but he's really accurate um, with his predictions. Um, in with those four returning starters, you have nine players all together that have starting experience. That's huge because that affords you a little bit of depth. When you look at teams like Alabama, you look at teams like Ohio State, you look at teams like Clemson, they have depth at all positions. And I'm not putting the Gamecocks up there with these type teams by any stretch of the imagination. And that's one of the things that you got to build on. You can't run the same damn five offensive linemen out there for three and a half quarters every game and expect you to not see injuries. Greg Atkins, New uh, offensive line coach comes over from Marshall. Last year, Marshall only allowed 12 sacks all year long. That's huge. I think Adkins is uh, a guy who adds a new dimension, uh, a new, uh, shall we say, enthusiasm to uh, that offensive line room. I think this will be the key unit on the team, as well as the defensive line. Guys, it all starts and it stops with your lines of scrimmage. If you've played football, um, if you've watched it for any amount of time, you will realize that. If you have great wide receivers, you have a really good quarterback, you have a damn defensive backfield unit that's one of the tops in the country, if you are not strong up front, you're not going to win a lot of football games. The guys that are closest to the ball, your quarterback, your offensive line, and your defensive line are the keys to your team, period, period. And that's just facts coming from the mouth of Carolina Jackpot. Uh, I'm not the first person to say that. I'm just repeating it to you. And I feel like I'm preaching to the choir sometimes because people just don't get that. It is imperative that these units are solid. And I feel like the offensive line at South Carolina is going to be the strength of the team this year, along with the running back position. The defensive side of the football was a sore spot for this team last year, and it really should not have been. When you look at the players that got drafted, how high they got drafted, the things that they uh, did, in comes uh, defensive coordinator Clayton White, of course, with the Alcine Will Muschamp. They get rid of old defensive coordinator Tavares Robinson. 9-4 and four last year was the record for Western Kentucky, the team Clayton White's been uh, the defensive coordinator on for a few years. That was largely under a really, really good defense. So this team last year was 12th in the conference versus the run. That is that is the key issue that we're facing right now. You have got to stop the run. Only Ole Miss and Florida were worse. Um, you only generated 14 sacks as well, uh, which was a four-way tie for last with Arkansas, uh, Kentucky, which is kind of a question mark to me, and Vanderbilt. The defensive line should be a strength of this team, led by uh, Kingsley J.J. Inigbare. I don't know why you got to say both his middle names when you do it, but Kingsley J.J. Inigbare, six sacks last year, um, is a first-team All-SEC type player. He's twitchy, really twitchy. He's got the body frame. He's got the tools and the essentials to be an NFL player. He's gotten some uh, some penalties over the years, some kind of unsportsmanlike stuff, some personal foul type stuff. Hopefully, he's got all that cleaned up going into 2021 to be the absolute best that he can be. We need five stars, Jordan Birch, an edge rusher, five stars, Zach Pickens, a defensive tackle to really step up uh, and show a nasty side this year. Uh, I think these young men have a nasty side. We just got to get it out of there. Uh, Tonka Hemingway, uh, a four-star kid uh, out of Conway, South Carolina, started, did some good things last year, uh, is going to... Uh, be one of the main states there on the defensive line, as well as Jordan Strahan, Strahan, Strah, blah, 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 blah. I don't really know how to say your name. He's a transfer from Georgia State. Kid had 10 and a half sacks last year. Uh, at Georgia State, he led um, 
FC or FBS in sacks. Uh, he transferred to South Carolina, so that is a huge get for us. Uh, Aaron Sterling, as a kid who's been around the program forever, uh, Shane Beamer said that he's had a really good off season, a really good summer. We'll see. Uh, he can play a variety of positions there along that defensive line as well. You lose. Uh, a little bit of talent as well as Kier Thomas, a guy who would have been like a 12th year senior who transferred to Florida State. Uh, whatever. Uh, great knowing you. Uh, another kid who uh, obviously was uh, probably in love with Will Muschamp and decided Florida State was the place for him for 2021. Good luck to the young man. Defensive line is not a huge concern for me, uh, as well as linebackers and defensive backs is. South Carolina will run the 4-2-5 scheme. Uh, the loss of Ernest Jones, who was the uh, leading tackler last year, uh, he's going to the NFL, play, playing for the Los Angeles Rams, I believe. And uh, Jamie Robinson, another kid who transferred to Florida State, drinking the Mike Norvell Kool-Aid. Uh, will be gone. Uh, you'll miss them a little bit. Uh, at linebackers, you got Sherrod Green, Brad Johnson, and Damani Staley, kids who have been around the program for a while, but really have not done a lot, whether they're limited due to injuries, playing time, or whatever. We really need them to step up. Uh, Muhammad Kaba, Kaba, Kaba is a kid who uh, kind of burst on the scene a little bit last year. Did some good things for us. I think he is definitely a rising star in that linebacker core. Uh, but that one definitely has to improve if we're going to be able to do anything defensively uh, this year. Um, 2,561 yards last year is all South Carolina gave up. Total, as far as uh, the passing game goes, there are only a few better uh, in the SEC last year. And uh, there was the 500-yard uh, game at Ole Miss, which was kind of an outlier. I mean, everybody gives up a lot of passing yards to Ole Miss. Everybody wants to bitch about the passing – the, the, or the uh, defensive backs last year. My God, did you see that? They really were not that bad. That was the, uh, the most solid group on the team. This year, it may be a little bit weaker. Um, you do return Cam Smith, who had two interceptions last year. Uh, that's really kind of your top guy returning to the team. R.J. Roderick comes back to safety position after opting out in 2020 for COVID. Kind of hit the transfer portal heavy on this side of the ball. Karen Prunty is a kid who I think is going to be a sleeper and a really, really good player for South Carolina. Uh, as a freshman All-American last year at Kansas, and you say, well, can a player from Kansas, what are you doing? The kid only allowed a 38% completion percentage to his side of the field last year, and that's playing against uh, quarterbacks like Spencer Rattler, uh, against guys like Charlie Brewer from Baylor, um, against guys like Sam Ellinger, against kids who throw it all over the ballpark. I am really excited to see it. And he came from that mess in Kansas. Just a bad culture, bad fit, a bad program all the way around. He really did some good things. Uh, Carlin's Playtel is a kid who's coming in from uh, junior college along with Tyrese Ross, a transfer in from Washington State. Um, I, I, I really think that this group uh it's got some growing to do a lot of growing to do a lot of gelling to do um but you know with the coaching that they're going to get from uh position coach Troy and gray they may be okay they may be okay um just you know south carolina will face some teams that can air the ball out a little bit along the sec schedule uh second week of the season they're going to face one uh, so Getting this thing gelled quickly in a hurry and early is vital for South Carolina. Special teams, I think South Carolina will be okay. This will be another strength uh, of the team. Uh, Dak Joyner and Nick Muse were two team, our guy, or two guys identified by the coaching staff as doing really well on special teams over the spring and summer. Um, freshman uh, Juju McDowell, who uh, ran a touchdown back for, uh, or ran a kickback for a touchdown last year in the Georgia. High school state championship game as a kid that I think you need to keep an eye on as far as the return game goes. They bring in Pete Limbo, who is a, a, a special teams wizard. I mean, this guy uh, has been head coach at Ball State. 
He's made stops all over America. Uh, if you look at him and look at him and give him an interview, a football coach is the last thing in the world you'd think this guy would be. you think he's either a scientist or um, some guy who's going to come sell you insurance. No, he's not. He's just one of the best special teams coaches in college football. He came from Memphis, uh, and we're really glad to have him uh, at the University of South Carolina. Uh, punting the ball, uh, Kai Kroger, a kid with 43.3 yards a punt last year. Um, he didn't get any love from Steels Magazine, but the Ray Guy Award watch list puts him down there as somebody to keep an eye on. So, yeah, I really don't get that. Uh, Parker White is a kid. This is his fifth year uh, at South Carolina. He was 11 and 19 last year. As far as field goals go, when he had made 12 or 13 kicks in a row, if you'll remember last year, early on in the season when we played Vanderbilt, I did a video where I just fucking unloaded on Will Muschamp for his stupidity, trotting him out there to try a 55-yard field goal on the road at Vanderbilt on wet turf, and he missed it, breaking his string, probably fucking with his psyche a little bit. He finishes up 11 and 19 for field goals, which is his worst mark of his career. He's only one of 10 from 50 yards plus. Stupid move by Muschamp, uh, along with many, many dumb moves he made over his tenure at South Carolina. And why would you trot this guy out to try a 50 something yard field goal at Vanderbilt? I mean, it's freaking Vanderbilt, dude. You're going to win the game, okay? Just cool your jets. You could have went for it on fourth and whatever. You could have punted it and put them deep in their own territory. Instead, you try to this monster field goal that he has no hope in hell of hitting and breaking his string, fucking with his psyche. These kickers are fragile. You don't do things like that. Enough about that one. Um, offense, defense, special teams, I think we've covered all that. Now we're going to get into the schedule for 2021. We're going to give you the wins. We're going to give you the losses. So let's pick these games, folks. Starting off with Eastern Illinois at home on September 4th, a Saturday. Of course, South Carolina does not play any Thursday or Friday games this year, as some teams do. Uh, everything is just a standard Saturday schedule. Eastern Illinois, this is going to be a win for the Gamecocks. Uh, they can name the score here, should be able to name the score. Uh, this is a team that uh, is 1-11 combined. Uh, between 2019 and 2020, they actually played spring football for the 2020 season here in the spring of 2021. The Gamecocks get the win. Next week, we're on the road at East Carolina. Um, this team has a solid offensive line coming back. Okay, They have pretty solid quarterback play as well. Holton Aylers, uh, the southpaw, has some NFL-type potential. Uh, his wide receiver core is kind of unproven, as is his running back core. Um, they won their last two last year. Okay, finished up with a three and six record. Eighteen touchdowns, nine interceptions last year for Ayler. So he needs to improve those numbers a little bit. Um, th th this is going to be a win for South Carolina on the road. Uh, in Columbia, on the moon, it shouldn't matter. South Carolina is going to win this game. South Carolina is going to be able to push East Carolina around up front uh, along uh, the offensive line of scrimmage, especially in the second half. I think they'll wear this team down and win by at least two scores. These are the type of games South Carolina needs to be going into with the mindset that we're better than this team and we're going to beat them. Okay, instead of going out there with trepidation, like, oh, boy, is this where we stumb our toe? We've got to have a positive. And I'm not saying overlook teams, but this should be a win for South Carolina on the road. We've won the last four in the series. We make it five in a row over East Carolina. South Carolina gets the win. Next week on the road at Georgia. Um, loss. Uh, I'm sorry. I can't uh, see any scenario there where the Gamecocks win that game. Uh, this is a team with one of the best run defenses in the country. That's our bread and butter. Uh, there you go right there. Um, solid on both sides of the ball, recruiting at a very high level. Uh, they're either going to come into this game 1-1 one and one or 2-0. and oh. If they come in 2-0, and oh, it means they've knocked off Clemson. They're riding the high horse. If they come in 1-1, one and one, maybe they lose to Clemson, and maybe they're looking to really tune South Carolina up. 
before they get into the meat of the SEC schedule. Uh, best case scenario, I think we only drop it by a couple of scores. Worst case scenario, we go down there and get housed. But I do think that Georgia wins this game. Uh, next week, we are at home against Kentucky. Um, I, I'm, I'm really not impressed with the skill play at Kentucky, uh, especially from the quarterback and wide receiver positions. Their running game is pretty solid. They're solid along the lines of scrimmage as well, I and mean, we know how important that is. Um, South Carolina still probably kind of finding themselves here a little bit. Um, and that Georgia game, I mean, it could beat you twice. It could beat you twice. Uh, given our historically piss-poor performances against them, especially the last eight years or so, I want to go with this as a loss, but then again, you know, you look at that and say, we got to throw all that stuff out the window. Hey, this is a new coaching staff. We're starting over here. This is going to be a big game. It, it, this is going to be a big game for South Carolina. Um, just looking at it from right now, not knowing any more than I know right now, Unfortunately, I'm going to have to give us a loss in this game. I, I think Kentucky beats us here. I think it's a close game. I think maybe it's kind of a lower scoring game, maybe a 23-20, 24-21 type deal. But I do think we take the loss to Kentucky here, just being realistic. Um, it, it, it definitely, I think, is one of the more winnable games on the schedule as far as SEC goes because – Talent-wise, I think South Carolina and Kentucky match up fairly decent, but I'm going to go on ahead and give them the win here uh, in Columbia. The next week at home against Troy, uh, this is going to be a win. Troy has uh, experienced a huge drop-off uh, since Neil Brown left to take the job at West Virginia. Had a couple of losing records. However, last year, they did play Coastal Carolina closer than anybody. Came within like 30 seconds of upsetting Coastal Carolina at the very end of the season. Uh, this team returns their entire defense, and quite honestly, this could be a tougher test than uh, East Carolina. Defensively, I think Troy's pretty good. Offensively, I think they struggle, which is kind of uh, the opposite from uh, what East Carolina is going to bring to the table. I do think Carolina gets the win in Columbia, but I think it's a game that that has the potential to be tied after halftime. Uh, I don't think it's going to be one of those Appalachian State deals. I don't think that this team is that talented, but I do think they could offer a stiff challenge to the Gamecocks. I think we win in the end by 14 to 17 points, but look for the Trojans to put up a fight. Next week, we're on the road at Tennessee. This team, like South Carolina, it just has so many question marks. Um, they'll be coming off games at Florida and at Missouri. Uh, both of those are going to be losses for Tennessee. They could be a little bit beat up. Uh, their quarterback uh, is probably going to end up being Hendon Hooker, the transfer from Virginia Tech. However, it could be Joe Milton, the guy who transferred in from Michigan. Or it could be, um, what's his name, Harrison Bailey, a young kid, pretty highly touted. Uh, you know, I don't know uh, how they're uh, – Josh Heupel uh, is going to have, in my opinion, an up-tempo system here. But Josh Heupel, as a head coach, has not had the task of rebuilding a program. His only other head coaching stop, he was given the keys to a Cadillac. And, I mean, while he didn't turn the Cadillac into a Pinto, um, he, he, he downgraded it from a Cadillac to a Lexus. Uh, it, Central Florida was not as effective the last couple of years as they have been uh, the previous three or four under Scott Frost. Um, so going to Tennessee, he's taking over a monster shit show, and I just don't know how they're going to fare out here. They got a couple of decent wide receivers. They got question marks at running back. Uh, you know, I think the quarterback play could be good if they have a simple enough system uh, that they can get early on. Um, defensively, I, I don't know what to expect from Tennessee. Um, they lost their best player there. Henry Toto uh, hit the transfer portal, went to Alabama. Um, dang, that's a, that was a nice one. I, that's, that's a pickup I would have liked to have had at South Carolina. 
I don't know if they ever even made a play for him. Which is a shame. You already knew how to find the end zone at Williams Rice. I'm giving South Carolina the win here. I, I think you beat Tennessee. I, I just think they, while both teams are uh, are going to be expected a, a little bit down, I think that they're down a little bit more in South Carolina. I think they have just a little bit of negativity surrounding the program and um, question marks. Give South Carolina the win at Tennessee. Next week, you come home, take on Vanderbilt. Uh, you make it three in a row over Vanderbilt and beat them once again. Haven't lost to them since 2008. Watch out. Uh, I think this is a team that has potential to be better than Tennessee, at least. Um, they have 17 returning starters there, uh, bringing in the new coach, Clark Lee, new mindset there. Um, although I did like Derek Mason as a head coach. Uh, I think that he did the best that he could at Vanderbilt. That's one of the, those kind of guys. You hate to see anybody get fired. But it, it's easy to hate somebody or not – well, not hate's a strong word. It's easy, it's easy to really dislike a coach that's uh, – that lies um, – like uh, the uh, aforementioned head man at South Carolina tells uh, tells bullshit, this, that, and other in the press conferences, can't own up to anything. It's easier to dislike a person like that than it is to dislike someone like Derek Mason, who I feel like really tried and really uh, loved uh, the program that he uh, was tending to. It just didn't work out. Uh, I think South Carolina gets the win here. But they had some close losses last year at A&M, at Mississippi State, at Kentucky. They're going to get uh, one or two of those this year. But it's not going to be in Columbia against South Carolina. I think that uh, we just got a little bit too much for them on the 16th. Gamecocks win this one. The next week, uh, tough game here. South Carolina kind of gets brought back to reality a little bit. And uh, they dropped their seventh, is it seventh or eighth? I've lost track now. I think it's seventh. It'll be eighth game in a row at Texas A&M, or against Texas A&M. They go 0-8 against the Aggies. This is a very, very talented team. Uh, really good on both lines of scrimmage last year. Uh, defensively, they were, they were excellent. Um, they got a new quarterback come in, Hayes King. He is a highly touted kid that should be uh, in a good groove by this point in the season. Isaiah Spiller uh, at running back, who a lot of people think is better than Kevin Harris. Uh, I tend to disagree a little bit, but then again, I'm biased and I'm a homer. Uh, they've got a couple of really good wide receivers there. And um, I, I think that Sacramento's just going to have a hard time with this one. Uh, and you take the loss there. Although I do think this one's going to be more competitive than last year's game. Let's be quite honest. Uh, it couldn't be uh, much more uncompetitive than that one was. The next week, South Carolina comes home to take on the, the Florida Gators. Excuse me. The next week, South Carolina has a bye right there uh, around the 31st of uh, October, which means they can go trick-or-treating and not have to worry about getting up and playing. Now, that'd be on a Sunday, wouldn't it? Never mind. I'm just being silly here. Um, you're going to like this one. I think South Carolina pulls the upset here and wins at home against Florida. And at that point in the season, who knows? It may not be an upset. I don't know what to think of Florida right now. Uh, I think Dan Mullen is a better game day coach than a lot of people give him credit for. I think he's a better coach than a lot of people give him credit for his mouth gets him in trouble a lot his actions kind of get him in trouble a lot and uh, you know get some uh get some frowns from people get poked fun out a little bit uh, but if he weren't doing all that would we really uh have that low of opinion of Dan Mullen I don't think we would um I was good at developing quarterbacks I'm interested to see how their offensive dynamic changes this year with Emory Jones and the runaround offense uh, as opposed to the pro-style passing attack with Kyle Trask. They have lost a lot. I mean, a lot of talent. And you kind of saw that on display in the Cotton Bowl game against Oklahoma at the end of the season when they had a bunch of opt-outs uh, for that game. You kind of saw on display what you're going to get in 2021, in my opinion, and it wasn't very good. Um, is this a sure thing? No. Am I going out on a limb here a little bit? Yes. But South Carolina has dropped close games to Florida in 2018, 2019. 
which I know earlier on I talked about, you know, losses to Kentucky in a row and, and that being the Achilles heel. So I, I realize I'm kind of, I'm kind of back talking myself here, talking out of both sides of my mouth, but I still think there's motivation there. There's still players on this team that uh, want to get this win. Last year, South Carolina played Florida a really good game, especially in the first half. Coaching lost that game for South Carolina. It wasn't the effort that was put forth on the field. Coaching lost that game. Piss poor clock management uh, from Will Muschamp and staff. I think South Carolina gets the win here. I am going out on a limb. Florida is obviously more talented than South Carolina, even with the uh, the attrition uh, from last year's team. I think South Carolina finds a way to get this one done. Maybe Florida's had a couple of losses already that they shouldn't have. I've already pet done their video. I predict them to go seven and five in the regular season. I just don't see great things coming from uh, Gainesville this year. But we get the win there on November the 6th and head to Columbia, Missouri with a five and four record in mid-November. This game for South Carolina is one, and I, I, I took a little bit more time kind of look at this one. Um, I'm going to give us a loss here. This is a, a venue where, I mean, South Carolina has had mixed success here. They went on the road there in 2013 and uh, kind of pulled off a little bit of an upset against a Missouri team that was ranked like number four in the country at the time. Everybody remembers that was the uh, Connor Shaw to uh, – Bruce Ellington touchdown pass on like fourth and 15, where Bruce just barely uh, made like a shoestring catch there. That was an awesome game uh, as a fan to watch. Probably one of my top five Gamecock games, probably the top three most thrilling finishes. This kid's kind of underrated, I think, at times. Uh, the quarterback there, Connor Basilak, is he overrated or not? I, I mean, I really can't tell. This guy put up some decent numbers last year. Uh, but I, th I just think that, you know, I mean, comparing him to, like, Drew Locke or whatever, I mean, you know, this guy's not got that got that type of talent. He doesn't have that kind of receiving core around him. And people want to talk about Kevin Harris putting up numbers against shitty defense as well. well this guy did, too. <laughs> I mean, against teams like Georgia, Florida, I mean, he had, you know, very little success there. Uh, so... It's just the fact that this is a road game. I think that South Carolina is going to beat Florida, and I think they may be um, you know, caught the next week uh, with their drawers down a little bit, so to speak. Uh, like I say, this is not, not the easiest venue to play in. It's not the easiest venue to get psyched up to play a game in. And despite the fact that uh, I, I'm not that sold on this quarterback being that great, I do think Missouri has a lot of talent there on defense and that they get the win over South Carolina in a, a fairly close game. I think South Carolina is really competitive here. Uh, next week uh, at home uh, against uh, Auburn, <sighs> another one, guy. There, there are a lot of things here that are just kind of coin flip games to me. Um, Auburn plays a schedule this year that is really tough. Uh, not to say South Carolina's schedule is not tough, uh, but they're, I mean, they, they go on the road to Penn State, I mean, and then they play that uh, SEC West slate. Uh, they got Georgia as their cross-division team from the uh, East, as well as uh, the Gamecocks. <sighs> new offensive coordinator, new defensive coordinator, new coach, new scheme, new everything there. Uh, we really just do not know what to expect from Auburn. Uh, last year, they did outgain South Carolina pretty significantly, even though the Gamecocks were able to get the victory there. They kind of shot themselves in the foot. They're another team that's really solid defensively. They do have, uh, uh, I think, a quarterback in Bo Nix that has some untapped potential. We'll see what he can do this year. He's been kind of disappointing uh, since he's been at Auburn. But he's still a young kid. He's still got some stuff that he can learn. I think he'll be improved this year. I think he's going to have his best year, even though he has lost uh, some wide receivers. Uh, Tank Bigsby, who I uh, affectionately call Stank Bigsby, 
uh, which I didn't really care for him because he committed to Auburn over South Carolina a couple of years ago, and uh, we really kind of wanted him at the time. It turned out we ended up getting Kevin Harris there. That we didn't it was kind of a diamond in the rough, and then Marshawn Lloyd. Uh, so we're, we're okay, but still call him Stank. Um, Stank's another guy who's a really good running back. Um, a little bit of a revenge game there, even though this uh, the loss was under – a uh, previous coaching staff. Though that being said, this is actually going to be conference-wise probably Auburn's either easiest or second easiest conference game of the year. Uh, either this one or the uh, Mississippi State game. I'm not really sure which. Uh, I'm going to call this one a loss for the Gamecocks. I just think Auburn is probably going to have a little bit too much. And this is probably a game that goes to the fourth quarter, but we end up dropping it there. So we head into the regular season finale uh, against Clemson. Uh, by this time, the Gamecocks have already clinched bowl eligibility. We actually did it against Florida. I failed to mention that. I think we, I said we went to Missouri five and four. We'd actually go six and four. Right? Six and three. I can't add today. <laughs> My number's off. The same's right in front of me. Six and three. Two losses in a row. Uh, then, of course, we've got the uh, matchup there on Saturday night after, or Saturday, I don't know if it's a night game yet or not, after Thanksgiving against uh, the Clemson Tigers. And <clears throat> this is uh, it's not going to be an easy night for the Gamecocks. That's going to be a loss. Um, I, I, mean, I, I don't know what to say at this point. I mean, offensively, uh, Clemson's going to be really good. Uh, you know, I give him a lot of crap on the podcast and this and that, but uh, DJ Uangala, DJ U, I, I still am struggling to say his name correctly, is a, uh, a very, very solid young man. I think he's going to have an excellent year. He's got a howitzer for an arm. Uh, Justin Ross is as healthy as they say he is. Um, they're going to tear it up. Uh, as well as I think uh, that by this time of the season, it's, it's the last game of the season, so they definitely should have a running game uh, established there. We've got Lynn J. Dixon back. Um, the young kid out of the Charlotte area, Will Shipley, really highly regarded. I believe he's a five-star player. Um, you know, defensively, I think they're going to be good. Um, just, you know, just all 11 positions. I mean, they're really solid. Defensive line up front is really solid. Um, Special teams, solid. I, there's a lot of speed there. I just I don't see South Carolina being able to uh, feasibly win this game. I, you know, uh, Clemson's going to roll through after game one. Uh, their schedule is going to be fairly easy to navigate, and I just don't think that we uh, have the talent at this point in time to match up, unfortunately. I give South Carolina a loss. However, I do think this one will be more competitive. Then the last time Clemson came to Columbia two years ago in which uh, Will Muschamp's squad just basically rolled over and played dead after the first quarter and lost 38-3. to uh, This is one, I mean, I see us maybe losing it by three scores, but I see us maybe punching Clemson in the mouth early, keeping it close by halftime, and then maybe getting worn down a little bit in the second half. So that's what I expect to see happen here, guys, and South Carolina would finish this season up with a – Six and six. I look like a first grader right now. Six and six record. And that would be a that's a three and five record in SEC play with wins over Tennessee, Vanderbilt, and Florida. And then dropping the two games to the uh, Western Conference foes, also uh, Georgia and Mizzou. There you have it, guys. The Carolina Jackpot 2021 South Carolina Gamecocks. Picks and predictions and preview. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit it with a thumbs up. Share it. Uh, put a comment down there. Also, go into the description box below and uh, click that link and uh, get in the uh, Callaway's Pick'em Challenge contest for this season. You know, maybe you agree with me. Maybe not. Maybe you think South Carolina that it all falls apart. South Carolina goes three and nine. Maybe you think that South Carolina wins seven eight games uh, you know that this one the six and six i think is honestly guys is a ceiling 
Uh, could some of these games go a different way? Possibly, you know, maybe, you know, and the Florida game is one that could switch. Maybe South Carolina loses to Florida, uh, and maybe they're able to pull out a win and beat Kentucky. Maybe South Carolina loses to Kentucky and Florida. Maybe they find a way to kind of upset Auburn, or they, they find a way to upset Missouri. But I do not see them winning any more than six regular season games this year in good faith. I just can't make that prediction here in August. I got to see what the product uh, looks like when it hits the field in September. But I really do appreciate you watching this video. And uh, hey, spurs up, guys. I'll see y'all later. Appreciate you. Peace. And I'm out. Go Cox. Ah, ah, ah. Woo.